Today we are going to take a look at the full bed, but it might not be as cut and dry as you think. Hello everyone, Chris here, and yes, today we are going to be checking out the full bed from Fullament. They were nice enough to send one over for me to check out. But you know this is Chris's basement, and I can't make a video without including a lot of tidbits that you might want to consider if you're going to upgrade your 3D printer. That means the bed included. So today we're going to check out the bed, see what features it offers, then we'll take a look at some testing I did when I installed it on this machine. So let's check out the bed first. So here's a look at the full bed. It's basically a really high-end piece of aluminum. This is T6661. It's been heat treated and it's 5 millimeters thick. It's said to have a 0.15 millimeter degree of flatness, so it should be very flat and consistent. And it has 36 high temp magnets on the backside to hold down your spring steel sheet. Note, my bed is a pre-production unit. Yours won't look exactly like this. But the one you order, the magnet temps should be good up to 180 C. And that's pretty impressive. And when you order your bed, for an additional cost, you can also get a spring steel sheet. They even have ones with the powder coated PEI on one side and smooth on the other. This is a fairly thick sheet. This one is 0.5 millimeter. That's about as thick and stiff of a sheet that I've seen from any manufacturer. And I have to say the magnets on these beds are no joke. Watch your fingers, kids. And from what I've seen so far with the full bed, it is a very well manufactured part. But of course, we always do have to talk about price. These are still in pre-order, but if you want a bed for an Ender 3 like this and a double-sided sheet, it is almost $140. So prepare yourself for that. Also, we need to talk about how this becomes a heated bed because it's a little different configuration for an Ender 3 and some of the other printers they offer it for. Now they are working on a silicone style heater that fits on this bed, but those would be AC powered. So you'd have to do a lot of reconfigure on your Ender 3 to get that to work. But we'll talk about that just a little bit more. Now once you have your full bed, their intention for you to install this is to use the stock build plate as your heated bed. So you would put the screws on your full bed, then you would sandwich it down on your stock heated bed, put the springs back on, and then put your bed knobs back on. So that does add some mass to this config. Now it does work, but there are a lot of things to consider here. Now hold on, I know exactly what you're thinking. You're thinking, Chris, you just told me what this product was, how much it cost, and that I had to use my stock build plate to make it a heated bed. And I had a lot of the same thoughts that you do right now when I first saw this setup. But hang in there with me, we're gonna look at this a couple of different ways. Now, when I saw this setup, the first thing that came to mind was, won't that build plate be pretty heavy for a 3D printer? So let's just see what we're dealing with here. Stock Ender 3 heated bed, no plate. This is three millimeter aluminum, weighs in at 427 grams. The full bed, five millimeter aluminum, by itself with no sheet, weighs in at 768 grams. Put the sheet on top of that, that's another 247 grams. And remember, you have to consider any filament that you print on top of that. Eventually, that will come to add up to some weight. So you can see the weight of the bed with all of that put together is almost to a one and a half kilograms. Where the stock setup, after you add the stock sheet that they give you over the Ender 3, will be less than 500 grams. And that's going to make a difference. But you might be asking yourself, why do we care? Let me show you. So as I said before, their intended install for this is they give you some extra hardware. These are a little longer screw. You thread them into your full bed from the top. Then those are used to go down through your stock build plate. And then your stock springs go back on these screws. And then you'll reattach your bed leveling wheel. Of course, after you get it installed, you will have to re-level the bed. On mine, I actually raised the Z end stop a bit because it is five millimeters taller and you will lose a little bit of Z because of that, but it's only five millimeters. They also do offer a couple of threaded holes back here if you'd like to rework your wire restraint. And on an Ender 3, that's probably not a bad idea at all. And then your spring steel sheet goes right on top. They even have some alignment pins back here and you wouldn't believe it, but not every company thinks of that, and they're a lot handier 
than you would imagine. It's nice to know you have it exactly where it needs to be. One more thing that you want to consider here is the thermal mass of this added 5mm plate. It's going to take this stock bed quite a bit longer to heat up this whole setup than it would just that 3mm plate. And it'll probably take a little bit longer to cool down. Now, why are we concerned with all this added mass to the motion system? Well, it's because an Ender 3 is a bed slinger. You have to move this back and forth with every print movement, and that's a lot more inertia to start and stop. And that can cause problems with your prints. And in the 3D printing biz, we like to call that ghosting or ringing. If you've ever seen an artifact on your printed part where it looks like it's repeating over and over, like it's an echo, you'll see it at the corners of your printed parts where it has to slow down or speed up. That's caused by a lot of different things, but mostly it's the mass of your carriage and how fast you're accelerating or coming to a stop. Take a look at these test prints right here. Now, this was done with stock Ender 3 settings. The perimeters were around 60 millimeters a second, which is kind of fast for a machine like this. But the acceleration while printing was set to 500, which is pretty much the normal setting you would see on one of these machines. Now, you'll notice some vertical artifacts. I also have a horizontal one here, which I'm not exactly sure why on this printer, but I need to check out the lead screw. But ignore that one. Here's the one with the stock bed and you want to pay extra close attention to the edge. If you look right in here, you can see some faint vertical lines. These prints were printed standing up just like this. This is the Y direction. And if you take a look at the one that was printed on the fuller bed, you'll notice some more exaggerated lines close to that edge. We can take a look at them side by side. This is the stock setup. This is the fuller bed. And at 500 Excel, it's not too bad. The effects are tolerable. But step up to 1500 acceleration. This one is the full of bed. This one is stock. They get much more exaggerated the faster you try to move that mass around. 1500 isn't out of the scope for a 3D printer. And step it up to 3000, there's a huge difference. This is stock. This is full of bed. At 3000, you can see just how prominent those artifacts are. I would not consider going this fast with this much mass. And when dealing with a machine like a 3D printer, you want to be able to move the carriages around as easy as possible, so you don't get artifacts like you saw before. So try to lighten up the carriage. You can print faster and better quality. So the full bed on an Ender 3, any bed slinging machine, I wouldn't recommend this configuration. I do like the bed and I like the sheet. The bed is really flat, but it's just too much weight for this design. There are better printer designs to use this on. But while we're talking about beds being flat, let's just see how flat this bed really is. So I wanted to do these tests just a little bit different. So I switched the fuller bed over to my printer that has the Mutant V2 on it so I could use my dial gauge. I did two runs without the sheet and with the sheet. Without the sheet, our smallest measurement was 1.95 millimeter. Our largest one was 2.14. So that is a difference of 0.19. So pretty close to what they say it should be. And the test that I did with the sheet on, I did the smooth PEI side because I didn't want the powder coating to make a difference. We saw pretty much the same results. In the same spot, our smallest measurement with the sheet on was 2.82. Our largest one was 3.03. .03. So that is a difference of 0.21. And some of these results might be a bit skewed based on the gauge that I'm using. It's not a very high quality gauge and the configuration of the printer. But it's close enough to what they spec that I'm satisfied. It's a pretty flat sheet. So the bed is definitely flat, no problems there. But I do have a few questions on how it would heat up using that 3mm bed that comes on the stock Ender 3 with that plate on top. So I want to take a look at that. So on the top of the bed we're reading about 53, the printer is set to 60, but that makes sense because this bed is pretty much a giant heat sink for the stock bed. Remember the thermistor is underneath that stock bed. So we got a little temperature drop, so you will have to compensate for that. So keep that in mind. 
And we can't do a video about a super flat bed without some sweet first layer action. So I really do like this bed. There's just things you need to consider if you're gonna make an upgrade like this. It's probably not the best option for a bed slinging i3 Cartesian machine, but it would work great on a printer where the bed drops down as it prints, like an Ender 5. This same bed would fit great on that printer. Also, I think this would be a great option for a custom printer if they start offering it in more sizes. And you can see on their site, all this stuff is still pre-order, and they have a couple of different sizes, even one for the Sidewinder. It's still a bed slinger, but I have hopes that they're going to offer larger sizes so we can add these to custom machines. When I build custom machines, one of the more difficult parts to source is the bed. I usually go with ordering some large type of aluminum, mix six, some high-end aluminum that I know is going to be flat, and then I try to convince one of my friends to do some machining on it so that I can add magnets in pockets. Like my buddy Dave Kennedy did for me last year when I was building the 2020 cube. This works out great if you're able to get it machined, but it's an extra step that you wouldn't have to take. Plus, if you had to pay for this, it might get kind of pricey. And by the time you buy the metal, get it shipped, have somebody do some CNC and add some magnets if that's the way you want to go, and then apply a flex plate, we might be talking about the same kind of money here. So I really look forward to seeing what Filament does with this line. I hope they make larger sizes. That would be a great fit for custom printer builds. That will be it for today. Remember, I have no affiliation with Filament. No money has exchanged hands, and all opinions expressed are my own. Take care, everyone, and we'll see you really soon on the next one.